Touch gestures in an AR app. Mobile phone users are used to using the touch screen to perform multiple tasks. The touch events generated allow you to detect a simple tap, a double tap or even a quadruple tap. You can detect if a user is holding down the touch or moving it. If a user has two fingers down, you can use this to generate a pinch or rotate event. Any standard JavaScript touch gestures library relies on events that are intercepted events generated by DOM elements. So to use such a library you would need to use the currently experimental DOM overlay as an optional feature. It is possible to use the controllers to generate events, so a DOM overlay is not strictly necessary. I wrote a class that makes it easy for you to include them in your WebXRAR apps. Bear in mind that these events only work if the controller is of type screen, in other words on a cell phone or tablet. Download or clone this repo. To work along with this tutorial open app.js in the start folder. Firstly notice we import the player class, a little class I wrote to make handling game characters easier. But the main thing we'll concentrate on in this video is the XR gestures class. We'll be using the canvas UI class in this video so you can clearly see which gesture is recognised. This is another class I wrote. Check out my YouTube channel for a tutorial. If you run the app at the moment it will show a panel that says Debug Info. In this app we're using the GLTF loader to load a cute animated knight. Find out in my WebXR 3GS course how I sourced, animated and prepared this asset. Details in the description. Ok now we're ready for the core purpose of this video, learning to use the controller gestures class. In the setup XR method add this.gestures equals new XR gestures this.renderer. This.gestures.add event listener tap ev arrow console.log tap self.ui.update element info tap. Now test the app. If you tap on the screen the UI panel displays the word tap and if you're using a desktop device and the WebXR emulator you'll see tap in the console panel. Using the WebXR emulator a click on the screen in AR mode uses the right mouse button. If you're using a real phone now would be a great time to set up debugging. Here's a great link explaining how you can use all the developer tools in Chrome when testing on a mobile device. Let's use this event to display the night character. Add if not self.night.object.visible self.night.object.visible equals true self.night.object.position.set 0 minus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.5 dot add ev dot position self.scene dot add self.night dot object Notice that a tap event receives a position. This is the controller position and a screen controller is positioned at the screen. The event also gets the matrix world property of the controller. We only display and position the night character if it's currently not displayed. A player instance has an object property that's actually a 3GS mesh. How about hiding the night? Let's use a swipe gesture. Notice that a swipe event has a direction. Only up and down are supported at the time of recording. If you run the app now you can display the night with a tap and hide it with a swipe. Great work! How about moving it using a pan event? This is more complicated. A tap, double tap, press and swipe event is called just once. Whereas a pan, pinch and rotate event is called multiple times once it's recognised as the current gesture. To allow you to initialise a variable the first call has an initialised property defined. In this code I use this to store the night object's position when the pan first started. Then for subsequent calls we clone the start then add the delta property of the event. This is how the start position differs from the current position. That covers the key single touch events. But you can also use double touch events. Let's add a pinch event. 
Notice the use of the initialize call to store the starting scale of the night object. Then for subsequent calls we clone the start scale and then multiply it by the ev.scale property. And then copy this to the night object scale. Notice that a pinch event has a delta property. That's how the distance between the two controllers has changed since the pinch started. Scale is the current distance between the two controllers divided by the starting distance and is more useful for the purpose of scaling a mesh. Now running the app allows us to scale the night up and down with a two fingered pinch. Finally there's rotate. Here we store the night object's quaternion property that stores its orientation. Then we restore this value and use the ev.theta property to rotate it by theta amount around the y axis using the rotate y method of an object 3D. Using gestures in an AR app is a useful tool for user input. This video is from my Learn to Create WebXR, AR and VR experiences using 3GS course. Get the course at a great discount at this address. Links in the description. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorial videos.